all right guys so in the last video we were able to successfully create a registration mutation and we were able to register our user to the database so now in this we are going to work with our authentication with a sign in basically it will be a sign in request without any further delay i'm going to start working on that and this was the point where we left off in the last video so the way we are going to do this is in, first of all in our mutation if you can see if i take you to this this uh, type definition of user you can see here we are accepting these two param these two things in our login routes whatever we get from here will be in our argument of that resolver function so we are going to create that resolver function and that resolver function is already created in the query section so now we need to simply copy this part and i'm going to paste it over here and in this and this will be again asynchronous request and here we are gonna pass this arguments so we we are firstly gonna validate that argument so i will simply say await and we'll bring in login validate from our validators await login validate dot validate and in this we'll pass our arguments and abruptly we'll set it to false so this way it is not gonna break up and then we are simply gonna do this we are gonna find our user from the database so this is one way we are gonna find that user from the database and if there is a user or if there is not any user will throw new error username not found okay but if we have that user that means this our user will be not null then we are gonna compare that password so let me put the comments check if the user is in the database with the username or not once that part is done compare the passwords and for that we have already brought in a bcrypt package so we can simply use that is match is match equal to await bcrypt dot compare and this we are gonna pass that compare comparison string so firstly will be our args dot password which will be extracting from our query fields which uh, from our parameters as well as the username and will compare with the user dot password field if not is match that means if our password is not matching this will be a boolean value and that will be false we can simply throw another error over here uh, we can say invalid password and if there is if we finally got our user we can then we can then again call our this function to create the tokens and we can if everything is going fine we can simply copy and paste that part over here so whatever the user we have already found in will simply pass there and we'll get issue get the tokens from the from the, our uh, this odd.js function which is over here so it will issue the tokens and give it back and this is very simple right so uh, what I can do for you uh, I can simply say login resolver and here it will be register resolver so let's go ahead let's go ahead and start testing this part so we'll simply say query login user 
and in this query I'm gonna pass login method I'm gonna call that login method and which would accept field so let's go and copy this part only the setting up is the hard job after that it's just a cakewalk so you can simply put those things and it will return uh, let me put it in a new line and quickly expand this stuff, expand this part quite a bit user we want name username then we want our user email our user ID and in this, remember in the previous one we were not getting that user ID from the backend and I also got came to know about one issue which we have which we haven't de dealt yet so for now that's fine we can simply copy uh, or we can simply run this query and we we'll log in that user and you can simply say we are getting that username is not found so why is that happening so for that if I go to the database show dbs I think await oh user find user name the use gql app show collections db.users not fine not pretty and we have that username over here yeah so as we can see we are, we don't have that username so that's why we were getting that error um, okay so instead of that you 991 I'm going to simply now log in that user and new user is not defined so I think that's a typo yeah here is that the new user so since we are using es6 format we can send that way let's try to re-login so it cannot be reached so it's still restarting it's now started now if i log in you can see the tokens are there with the refresh token and those things are already there so this is one part now the end of the part here comes like how are we gonna validate if the token is valid or not because now if you want to access this profile route we can simply do all this stuff and we can find that user from the database but uh, how are we gonna see which user is uh, from which token we have so currently if I go copy one of the token from here and go to our jwt.io page and if I validate a token, we'll see that I have made a small mistake, which is very, we can fix it any, any time. So that if I paste that token and you can see I have the username. So one way we can use our username since we have already, we are already using unique usernames, but I prefer that ID should be in, ID should also be in the token. So for that, you can see here. I have taken ID but haven't added to the payload so ID save it and this might take a moment and now if I log in we are getting our tokens if I copy now paste it over here and now you can see we have the ID field in that so now we will use this ID field to get our authenticated user when this token will be attached to our request parameters we can do that very simply and let me quickly collapse this so you can see our query for login user is working fine for that in our auth.js I'm gonna create a new function and that will be check signed in export const check signed in and this will be again an asynchronous request so 
here we are going to pass request and require requires auth by default it will be false until we pass any value for that by default it will be false in that now we are going to use that request and if you go ahead in our resolvers you can simply find that we are taking this we are using these arguments so we can use again that these arguments async and we use that argument and we can import that function check signed in from there so we can check signed in because since it is a protected route protected resolver and this will be an await call let check signed in and we'll pass that request over here and we will pass true because here we need to authenticate that user and if that becomes false then throw new error and in that error user not authenticated you can pass that over here but if that is that condition is true we'll simply get back our user or instead of that check we can simply say get auth user function so let me quickly rename that it's completely up to you whatever if you feel like you can use that and i prefer the ways of which makes more sub more understandable functions so I'm going to bring in user from models. Uh, we have to simply first get the header. Headers. Sorry about that. Request. dot headers dot authorization will extract that token from our authorization key which will pass in our request headers and if there is header present then we'll simply check that token const token jwt dot verify so this is a ma uh, this is a method which comes with this JWT and we can pass that token over here and if that token is validated we can simply use that token and we also need to pass uh, we also need to pass that uh, uh, the secret key which we have used to hash our algorithm so we have to pass that and if that token is there then it, this will become a decoded payload so we can simply get uh, our decoded decoded token from here and in that if we have the user so let's go ahead and try how it works console.log token decoded and we are simply saying token let's save this part for now we'll issue refresh token later i think i'll be search a little bit of mistake and typos so here we have our token and which is i know expired so we need to bring in because since we we have already used like uh two minutes of time for our jwt token so now in a headers you can simply say http query variables and headers you can set those headers authorization and we'll get that token and currently it's not gonna return anything but you can see console log 
and it will be again a query user profile profile and we need name username id email okay so currently i uh, know i'm gonna get the error but i just want to show you something so you can see header is not defined okay headers header is not defined i think i made a small typo that's the s and i'm gonna quickly collapse this okay so it's header and i'll take a i'll give a second to restart that server and it's taking quite a bit i don't know what's wrong with my system and if i see user is not authenticated you can see i'm getting the message but you can see that decoded token has all these values so now we can simply use those token values to get the user from the database and we can simply say let user auth user equal to await you we will use user model find find by id method we'll pass in that id token dot id if not auth user then we want to throw an error but this time it will be a special kind of error so for that we are going to import something from apollo express server and that will be an authentication a special error type that's called authentication error we are going to use that authentication error here throw new authentication error and in that we can simply pass our stuff you must be or we can simply say invalid token user authentication failed you can write your custom error message messages whatever you feel like you can write but if that user is there now if requires auth now we'll check if there if we need something to require auth will return the user else return no so in case we are if we want that authenticated user in our resolver we can simply uh, put that thing here but if we don't want and instead of or even well, that's fine so now you can use that function over here uh, await get auth user and this we want to pass our request if that request fails we will automatically get the error that user auth user equal to this and return auth user so let's go ahead and try hitting this endpoint with this so i think that my token is now expired so i have to quickly refresh uh, get this token but later i'm going to show you how you want to implement our refresh token mechanism also so this is our authorization header and now if i hit with the user profile now i'm saying getting this data profile null and that's because we haven't passed requires auth should be false or not false it should be true so that it will return it won't return null yeah and now user is not defined now user is not defined and how is that happening I think that's the issue over here yeah 
art user I think like art user so that's why it wasn't it was not able to understand what was that user was doing mm, okay now we run that and now I can see the profile of that user it's very simple right guys and now we are gonna work on a protected route another protected route and that will be uh, uh, only accessible with our refresh token mechanism so first of all I want you to get that token and in this token this time instead from from this our get refresh token user and this is a new function which we are going to create in our rjs export const asynchronous request and again we are get request and you can also modify a lot of stuff but this time this should return a user so i'm not going to pass any kind of parameter it should return something back and it will be basically the same and you can combine and squeeze the stuff but for now I'm just copying and pasting that stuff and instead of authorization I can simply say refresh token and currently now we are extracting that token from here and instead of this app secret we are going to use our app refresh secret in order to decode that token then again get back the token invalid refresh token user authentication failed and we'll return back the user and then once we get the user back over here we will simply use that user in order to authenticate in order to issue a new token so issue a new token And instead of this auth, this new user we'll use auth user and then we are gonna return from here user equal to auth user and we'll spread that tokens so this refresh token mechanism is quite very simple and self-explanatory I guess because this is nothing to do with token mechanism and let's go ahead and try okay so currently you can see if I log in okay now we get the token And it's again a query refresh token refresh token and we want to get back our user token and in the user we want name email ID username And we also want to get a new refresh token again a refresh token so now you can see if I see the time of this token issuing jwt.io again I know it's kind of repetitive now we we'll paste it and expiry is in like at 1246 currently it's 1245 so we just have to wait for a while in order to expire this token for now we can do our preparatory work fresh token and we'll copy that token and we are also expiring the previous token which was there which was already there 
So the time is still not over. 46. And after 10 more seconds, the token is going to expire. So we'll now issue a new token. And now if I refresh, I'm seeing get refresh token user is not to defined. Okay, so that's because we haven't brought in that function from functions auth. Let me save that. And now this will, this is very like, very simple error which I commonly do and anyone can do. I'm not a god in programming, so I also make a lot of mistakes. So hope you can understand. Just bear with me. So now if I refresh that token, request auth is not defined. And that's because we just have to return the user. Auth user. Currently because here we are not checking anything. Now if I refresh, you can see we have already got a new token. Which was like if I see MPEMI. And in this one, if I see the last endpoints was CICJ. So with that new, uh, with that previous token, we are getting two more new tokens. So this is a refresh token mechanism. And for the safety purpose, you can save that token in your database also, and then also compare with those tokens so that you can expire the previous tokens. But this was the way which I want to show you. Now let me quickly already align everything properly. Okay, so it's aligned properly now. With three functions, we did all the, all the stuff. So now this is a this is a this will be a resolver query resolver. Return the users. List. And this will be a protected type. So here we wanna check in if the user is logged in or not. Firstly, before proceeding with this. So for that, you're gonna copy this part. Oops. And if not auth user that means if we are getting null throw uh, I think we don't need that over here so it will be simply a false and if we are not passing anything by default it is taking that that function is already taking false but if we have then we will simply say let users equal to await user dot find And we'll get all the users and then we'll return back the users, list of the users. So now the real power which comes with the GraphQL is like uh, we already have our authorization token and I know that token is expired so I'm gonna quickly uh, get that token back but before that user list this will be a protected loud and in this one users and we want email field name field username field and we also want id field for the for the all the users but if i try to currently with this we can see jwt expired so we are getting this error from there token expiration error with the message jwt expired so for that we have to re-login copy this token use it into the headers and then if I again try we are getting the user list so if I remove one of the field let's say we don't want ID field we just want the username and now if I get the user list so you can see whatever the whatever the fields you require from the for the front end you can directly call on the basis of this 
so that's basically it about this video and you can see a lot of lot of other documentations are available you can learn more about this stuff and this is my crisp short way to explain all that stuff but there are a couple of bug fixes so the bug fixes which i'm gonna deal here will be uh, one of the bug fix was that if i go to the register user it already registered that user so let's say one two three and one 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 two and if i try to create a register a user we will get our user registered but the problem with that was this hoppy js the validation package which we used over here we are not we are not able to match it with our regular expression so for that regular expression we can simply go ahead and let me quickly check that refresh check that part so guys i just found those errors with the validation and the validation which we used here to validate by using a schema so there's a like lot lot of ground breaking changes in that so instead of that validate mac package uh, we need to bring in joy from happy joy as well as we need to bring in all the validation rules whatever we have created and there, are, there is a small change for the message so we are going to test with this regular expression with that earlier we wrote something like a uh, and that regular expression we pass something that uh, we need to set the message to this pattern dot base and this to must have at least something and this will be revert back to that object dot keys and in that in the same way we are just gonna create those scam schema or instead of re register schema I'll write login schema or rules rules and here we are going to bring in those things rules and we'll pass in that rules and remember we are not using joy validate we are using assert over here and abort early false and in the same way for the login also we need to validate that thing so joy dot assert ARGS and we here we'll pass login rules. So once that and about early we'll set it to false. So now if I go ahead and if I try to re register over here, I can uh, just a second, this might take a moment to spin up the server and the server is spinning up. So now you can see we have our messages over here that we are getting all sort of messages as well the path of that thing uh, path of that validation rule so it is saying com, com, it is saying currently that must have at least one lowercase letter so one uppercase letter okay and this should do the registration part and if I register the username is already taken so 565 and if I register now, you can see we have got our token. So if I copy this token and paste it over here, and then we can call our consecutive queries. So we go and get the user list. We are getting the user list. Currently, these many users are there. Some of the users which I have created using in a test testing environment. The refresh token works just fine. We don't have to worry about that at all. And for the login also, if I try to log in with this credential, you can simply log in user. You can say you can see the validation is now working on here for the password field. So if I try to log in again with using this password, one, two, three, four, five, six. And if I try to log in, and now you can see everything is working fine. So that's basically it about the video and if you like this content you can help us by help us in growing our channel i know i i'm not very f frequently uploading the content on the channel but i'm planning to work uh, full time on my channel because currently i was stuck with a lot of my crypto projects crypto based projects which i will i've been working with the ethereum based networks uh yeah and one more thing i want to completely dedicate my channel to UJS and node express even in even I'm planning to work on Dino Framework, so 
keep supporting us and we'll we really appreciate your work and you can become patron to our channel so thank you guys